Hello everyone, and welcome to my new Let's Play of Space Quest Chapter 2, Bohol's Revenge. So, uh, if you haven't seen my Let's Play of Space Quest 1, I suggest you do so. Just so you can be a little bit caught up on uh, what happened then, on those events, because they will have uh, some bearing on this. As you will recall in our last chapter, you just foiled the Sarian's fiendish plot to rule the galaxy by using the Star Generator as their weapon of destruction. You became a hero by saving countless lives and returning the Star Generator technology into safe hands. Life was beautiful. But heroes come and go, and people soon forget. Your celebrated herodom slowly fades, leaving you once again a janitor. The promotion to head janitor was no consolation, especially since you were the only member of the janitorial staff, nor was the transfer to Orbital Station 4. Sweating like a pork beast in a pressure suit while relocating space debris in zero gravity just wasn't your idea of a good time. Life sucks. Again. Place Xenon Orbital Station 4. And so we begin. Um, and this is kind of like a Legend of Zelda game where you can put in your own name. I believe they only did that in the first two games. Um, but our character already has a name. I believe if you just press enter, it will give it the default name, which is the name. Orbital Station 4 is one of many orbiting Xenon, your home planet. It is a transfer point for travelers seeking transportation to the various planets in the Irnon system. As we begin this chapter of our story, we find you, Roger Wilco, Ace Janitor, doing what you do best. Which is apparently cleaning. A beep emanates from your wristwatch. You release the grip on the broom. And there it goes. The broom floats away, never to be used again. That makes the third one this week. Wait till your boss finds out. You know, I think if they can afford to maintain a freaking space station, the price of a broom is marginal at best. Anyway, our watch was beaking, so this is a parsed game, which means you type in what you want to do. Look at watch, which was beeping. And, let's see, I believe we want to press C. Hello. <laughs> Roger Wilco, get in here on the double. You've got a mess to clean up in the shuttle, which just returned. One of the passengers got space sick on the way down. Besides, you should have been done out there an hour ago. Get a move on. So yeah, I'm deciding... Um, oh, with that, the image disappears. I didn't even press anything. So I've decided I'm going to be uh, reading text aloud, just to see how that feels. I usually don't do that. I usually just let you read it. But, um, yeah, so... With a game like this, this is an old Sierra game, you want to save a lot. So, save. Oh, I can't. You can't sp save on Space Zero because that's for the autosave. Save. There. And as you can see, I'm using Scum VM to be able to play this because it would not work on a modern computer very well without uh, that or DOSBox or something like that. Anyway, let's uh, get going. Wait a minute. Due to an obvious lack of common sense, you have stepped off the edge, lost your magnetic grip of the ship, and drifted to your death. Yeah, death can happen in, in an instant. I, to be fair, that was a pretty stupid one, but <laughs> there are some uh, less obvious ones. Another senseless tragedy could help. Another senseless tragedy, you can help prevent this. Vote yes on lobotomies for adventure game designers. Yeah, one thing about the Space Quest series, they have so many in jokes. So, uh, let's, let's see, is it restore or load? There. So you can just load back from where you were, and there you go. Resurrection. So what you want to do, this is actually pretty cool. And yeah, with this game, I actually don't have any childhood memories of it, because, um, although, like, in my house, we had a Space Quest 1, the BGA version, and Space Quest 3. Oh, see, like, look at that, isn't that pretty cool? But yeah, I never had this game. Well, we had the game, we had the box for it at least. I remember the box very specifically. 
But I, either there was a disc missing and one of the discs didn't work. But either way, yeah, I didn't get to play this one. And so I just... This is literally what I do. I would just sit there and stare at the box and wonder what kind of a game it was and wanted to play it so bad. Stand by for decontamination. But luckily with uh, modern sources and the internet, we have access to all these amazing games. So let's... uh. Begin our adventure as Roger Wilco. Should we be walking around in our spacesuit? No, we want to actually not do that. We got a lot of nerve coming in here with your EVA suit on, Roger Wilco screams your boss. That's the last straw. Turn in your mop. You're fired. I believe that's game over. <laughs> well, Roger Wilco, you certainly didn't get off to a very good start. Better luck next shift. You with the good work, Roger Wilco. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what you obviously want to do is uh, change. Okay, get close. There we go. And also over here we have our lockers and we want to get our stuff. Locker. You bravely peer into the locker to find your Cubics Room puzzle and your athletic supporter. Get Cubics Room. Get athletic supporter. Let's see. Can we look at our stuff? Oh, we have an order form. Oh. Look. Order form. It's an order form removed from a magazine for a free Le'Veon Terror Beast mating whistle. It's ready to be mailed. Why would you want that? Didn't we encounter one of those in a cave in Space Quest 1? I think that's what it was. What else do I have? Look. Cubix Rube. <laughs> Stupid more than you. And look. Athletic. Ah. Yeah, not the best uh, typist. Oh, come on. Why is that C? I think my C is sticking. Oh, look at it. Without close inspection, you notice it to be well used. What else did I have? You also check your inventory here. Dialect translator. Oh, we yeah, I think we picked that up last time. Maybe this was one given to us by the space people here in the place. Alright, good stuff. So let's get out of here. Oh, by the way, something you always want to do in a new place. This is the airlock chamber. From here you can gain extra vehicular access. Spare suits hang in the back wall. Some lockers are mounted on the side wall. So yeah, it kind of tells you some important stuff about the room or area that you're in. So things to take note of. Look. You are in the transportation control room of the orbital station. The room is abuzz with activity as technicians monitor XOS4 operations. A pneumatic transport tube is accessible from the walkway above. It's about time you got in here, Roger Wilco. Head for the shuttle bay on the double. I'm warning you, you're on your last leg around here, bud. One more screw up and your history. He then orders the transportation officers to send you directly to the shuttle bay and nowhere else until the job has been completed. I'm the only janitor you have, buddy. What are you going to do if I you fire me? So yeah, we have to uh, actually talk to men. She's not happy with you, Roger Wilco. The man says you'd better get over to the shuttle bay soon. By the way, you still owe me 20 bug swords. You best cough it up soon. Oh, let's uh, <laughs> just move on from there. And uh, get in the transporter. Wee! Okay, here we are. So I guess we have to 
go in there and clean it up. I don't know. Do. Oh yeah, we want to take a look. Go in the orbital station's shuttle bay. A shuttle, fresh from a passenger drop off on Xenon, is refueling for its next trip. A nomadic transport tube is accessible, da da da. Refueler replenishes the shuttle supply. Yes, that, that was a bit redundant, game. Hmm. So I believe we can just walk here and get on in. Into the shuttle and start sniffing around for the mess you must clean. I was surprised to find that the shuttle is not empty. There are two extremely ugly suckers walking toward you. What? Hi, what's your beep? Or what the? Okay. Ow, what the? What is happening? Your process is cut short as two interstellar ruffians proceed to thump you unconscious. Everything fades. Oh, that was you cussing. <laughs> or me, or whoever's playing. Time passes. More time passes. A strange dream turns into the realization that you are being shaken and talked to by a dull... by by an unfam voice unfamiliar to you. Jeez, this is why I don't read out loud. A dull ache triggers a... Oh, jeez. Upon awakening from your forced rest, it becomes quite apparent that you aren't in Kansas, or Xenon, anymore. You find that you are being held upright under physical restraint from both sides by, you guess, the galactic goons you met on the shuttle. I can't dilly-dally with this. As you try to struggle free, you notice that your hands are tied behind your back. As the eyes dial into focus, you make out an oddly disfigured being sitting before you. Oh. Sagging mass of flesh that appears to have been human at one time, tubes and wires extend from his body, leading to machines which keep him alive. Suddenly his visage stirs and he begins to speak. Well, well. Did we have a nice nap? I thought we would have to resort to drastic measures to wake you. Ah, oh well. Welcome to my humble fortress, Roger Wilkle. The name is Vohal, Sludge Vohal. I was the genius behind the star generator when it was still in the concept stages. It was to be my ultimate war weapon until some sissy pants scientist decided it would be better to use saving lives rather than destroying them. What a waste of technology. Excuse me if I sound bitter. Anyway. Ruined my Sarian operation. I was going to use the Star Generator to make Xenon pay for what they did to me. They were going to know my wrath in a big way. You somehow managed to change all that. Oh, I suppose I should have known better than to use those mental midget Sarians. That's not the point, however. You are responsible and you shall pay. Besides, I have another plan and you not be around to foil it. I have devised a plan so horrible, so frightening, so diabolical that no one will be able to stop me. Observe my latest creation. I intend to infest your planet with thousands of these genetically engineered door-to-door -door life insurance salesmen. I will at last reap sweet revenge for the scientific community that mocked me. Ah, oh, that sounds horrible. My plan was to kill you, but I've had a change of heart. Ha 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 ha. Get it. He peers down at the hoses protruding from his chest, connected to a life support system. Uh, forgive me, I'm a kidder. I've decided I would, much, I would get much more enjoyment watching you suffer. My associates will escort you to the surface of Lavion, where you will perform many painful hours of manual labor in my mines. Be seeing you. An injection renders you unconscious. Your drugged carcass is loaded onto a shuttle. Upon reviving, you look through the viewing port to see Vohal's massive asteroid fortress getting smaller.
Bye bye. Yeah, if you can tell, this game doesn't take itself too seriously. None of them do. <laughs> Touching down on a giant landing platform, you're ushered to a hovercraft waiting to transport you to the mining site. Utter despair sets in. And away we go. Looks like this is the end for Wa Roger Wilco. So this whole game is just uh, you mining for the rest of your life. So it's a pretty long game. It's in real time. And uh, it's very difficult, but this will be a... What? What? What's... Is something wrong? Uh-oh. Oh, great. I suppose we're out of fuel. Way to go, Gorf Breath. Don't blame me. It was your turn to fill up. You're always forgetting to do it. Wait till the master finds out you're in big trouble. Hey, don't talk to me that way. You slime bucket, I filled it last time. Dip. That's an old insult. The argument between the two cards is cut short as gravity reasserts itself. Whee! Crash. Good thing that guard broke your fall. He doesn't look too happy about it, though. So, here we are on the planet where the mining was supposed to happen, but we were cut a bit short, and... Yep, the majority of the game actually takes place on this planet. This has actually kind of been nicknamed, uh... King's Quest in Space, and you'll see why. Let's take a look around. You seem to be in a rather exotic forest. The growth here is unlike anything you are used to. On the ground lies the wreckage of the hovercraft you crashed in. Nearby are the bodies of your former captors. Well, I guess we're going to have to uh, explore this place and see if we can find a way off of this planet next time on Let's Play Space Quest 2 Volhall's Revenge. Thank you for watching, and have a good day.